Abadi, welcome to channel. All right, guys, quick, uh, quick trip this this weekend. It's uh, almost one o'clock. My wife uh, has been uh, in classes all week, so I had to wait till she was done with classes today. And Sunday's Mother's Day and my wife's birthday. So we're uh, I'm just meeting up with JT for one evening. Everybody else had stuff going on. Um, we're going to head up towards the Hamahama area again. Just it's a quick trip for both of us now. He lives on the island. It's about a two-hour drive for me, so I'm going to hit the road here. Uh, since the last video, I got my Rhino Rack utility clip thingamajoggers modified and put on this with my my yard shovel. I need to get a overland shovel. I uh, finally swapped out my solar panels to uh, my flat ones I've had forever. So uh, I cleared up my roof rack, got my uh, got my WeBoost antenna finally wired in. Couldn't find my uh, my clip for the antenna, so I had to design and 3D print one so the antenna will uh, clip down. But uh, yeah, let's uh, hit the road. Got a two-hour drive ahead of us. And I'm trying to trying to get through base before traffic gets absolutely terrible. So we'll hit the road, and I'll uh, catch up with you guys. I'm waiting to hear from JT on where he exactly is at. He wanted to find a spot on the river, if possible. So we're going to see what we can find. Uh, it's one downside of leaving this late is usually all the good spots are taken by the time I get out there. So he went out this morning, and I have not heard from him in a couple hours. So we'll turn on the Zolio. We both rock Zolios, so see if he uh, found something, and if he did, we'll uh, meet up with him wherever he might be at. I'll see you guys on the road. We're about 20 minutes or so away from our spot. That'll show up at all. Just been cruising, just got off the phone, a good friend of mine, chat about once a week, spent a couple hours on the phone, so I just got done talking with him, so that uh, killed most of the uh, drive over here. So we're uh, looking pretty good. ETA is 2.48. I've dropped a couple minutes off the time. Originally, I uh, just typed Hamahama into Google Maps, not paying attention. So I, uh, on paper, I should have already been there. I didn't actually put it in our spot. So we're uh, cruising. Got about four miles till we're off the highway here. And then uh, we should be good. JT snagged the spot up at the top of the bluff. Said there's already been a few people that have driven up on the spot. It's, uh, like I said, it's supposed to be a pretty good uh, chance of seeing the northern lights this weekend. Tonight's supposed to be one of the best nights. And uh, we've got uh, some pretty good view spots around this area. And he got probably one of the best. So I figured it would already have been taken, but he got up there about noon. So he uh, snagged the spot for us. So we're just going to cruise up. And uh, I get, I'll get i probably throw the drone up when I get off the main road, onto the dirt road, and kind of just cruise up there. And uh, I'll see you guys when we get up there. All right, guys. See if uh, we can get this to work going up this trail. Used to be able to track uh, super low, but now it. Uh, uh, every time I try to get super close to the truck, it says the altitude's too low. So we'll see if it uh, wrecks into the trees here. Uh, about one mile till we get up to our spot here so see how well this works pull over and let this motorcycle go by here in a second it's trailing it behind me
roll my window up. It's a massive amount of dust all of a sudden here. Oh, all of a sudden, this motorcycle rips past me. Spot right there on the left I've never really noticed. I'm not sure where that goes. I'll have to check it out one of these days. basically the same spot that we came to a couple weeks ago that I did a video on uh, but we're gonna go up to the upper spot have a better view up there it's usually not enough room up there because we usually got three or four rigs with us and there's not a whole lot of space in the top to be comfortable it's one or two rigs up there is about all you can really fit up there comfortably this is where I think I might have some issues with the drone, but we'll see if it stays with me or not with all the trees here. Whoa, just like that. First time I've wrecked a drone in uh, close to 10 years of flying a drone. Drone seems to be okay. It didn't even blade, break a blade. I might be missing a bezel around the camera. I'll check when I get up to camp here. It was literally right off the road. Landed in the bush, so it doesn't look like take any damage. Didn't even mess up any of the blades, but I do carry blades and everything with me. So I'll throw it up here when we get out of the trees. I think there's one more spot that I kind of drive through a clump of trees and I don't feel like dealing with uh, trying to wreck the drone a second time here and chancing my luck. So we'll uh, cruise up here and when I know I'm in the open, I'll throw the drone back up and we'll, uh, we'll cruise up to camp here. Let's try this again. We're in the clear now. Should be until we get up to camp, so make sure it can keep up with us here, but it should be good. You guys have already seen this a couple of videos ago. Did the same drive with the same drone shot. JT was in front of me last time. He's got a different rig with him. He's dealing with some insurance stuff on his Volkswagen, so he drove his uh, Toyota this trip he's been up at camp for a couple hours so he'll be up there when we get up there but cruise up and see what we got I've got a reading on what this uh, road pitch is at here. Now I mentioned it doesn't look, I'm at an 11 degree angle going up right now. It says my dash anyways, and it's pretty accurate when I'm at zero. I've never checked it anything else. Just hit 12, I'm back down to 11 right now. Just dropped back down to 10. I think it gets kind of steep up here as well when we get up to the second spot. Took some photos last time I was up there, but I don't think I took any drone videos when I was up at the upper spot last time I was here. Let's see if there's anybody at our usual spot. It's a school, but oh, a camper there. An Alaskan camper. I don't see those very often. It's like a pop top, pop top, the whole top of the camper, the whole camper itself raises up. If you guys haven't seen those, they're pretty dope. Uh, 12 right now, so not terrible. Is 
there's JT. And the bike that passed us. All right, guys. Guy in the motorcycle left. Got my uh, camp set up. JT's over there trying to make some peak food that's not working out for him. It's pretty windy right now, but keeps the bugs away. Pretty basic camp set up for today. Northern Lights should be right around there. If uh, if they decide to come out tonight, we'll see. But beautiful views up here today. See all the way up to Kanakistan over there. Mount Rainier. That's beautiful. Just saw a couple uh, bald eagles fly by. Talking to JT when I got here, the guy that I passed uh, at our lower spot we stayed at last time, he parked right at the entrance and we could get by him. I thought they were camping there. JT said they came up here and told him that they just parked there to have a spot for the Northern Lights tonight. And they're going to come back tonight at some point, which is pretty lame because there's enough room down there for 10, 15 rigs and got one dude blocking off the whole spot. It's a pretty dick move. Especially, he said he doesn't plan on camping up here tonight. He's just going to come up for the northern lights and then head home. But we'll uh, catch with you guys in a little bit. I'm going to make some dinner here in about 30 minutes. And then uh, we're just going to chill until, until the sun goes down and see what we can see. They said between 10 and 2 is the best time to see them if, if we're going to see them. So we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. All right, sun's gone down. Well, down. It's behind the mountains. I'm going to come up and show you guys the uh, beautiful view here. Dylan and his lady came up. thought we were going to hang out for a little bit, but they're staying the night, so that's pretty dope. I think you dropped your CarMax over here. Oh, there's a b bottle of CarMax over there. Hi. Hi. Hey, girl. Yeah, this is fucking beautiful. Light coming through the peaks behind us is dope, too. Yeah. Good morning, guys. It's uh, 6 45 a.m. It's already extremely warm out. Last night was one of the most beautiful, spectacular things I've ever seen in my life. I'll post up a couple of pictures here. It's about 10:30 uh, last night. We stayed up till well, it was about 9:30 when it started. We stayed up till a little after midnight, watching it. This morning's a beautiful morning. The sun is already blaring. But everybody's still sleeping, so I'm uh, making some oatmeal. So. I can take my meds this morning, but beautiful morning. I'll uh, wait until we're packed up, and then I'll catch up with you guys when we're uh, headed back down the 
Headed back down to the bottom. Just like I said yesterday, it's a quick trip this weekend. Basically, I came up here to hang out. Got blessed with the northern lights and then going back home. So I'll catch up with you guys here in a little bit. Sorry this video is all over the place, guys. I uh, was running on four hours of sleep yesterday and five hours of sleep last night. So I'm uh, kind of lagging everything I do today. But been on the road for just over an hour. Have about 40 minutes left. I'm going to meet up with uh, my wife and my kids and my in-laws. We're going to go check out their uh, new house they're having built. So I'm uh, heading towards their place instead of home right now. And then uh, we're going to check that out. But it was, uh, it was a nice day. It got extremely toasty this morning. I uh, woke up around 4, pretty warm. I had basically was just laying on the mattress with a rumple blanket on top of me. And uh, my fan was blasting on high, and it was still already pretty toasty. Then as soon as the sun came over the horizon, man, it just started baking everybody. It's uh, 9 o'clock right now, and it's already 75 degrees. It's going to be another warm one today for sure, but hoping I can see the uh, northern lights tonight again from home. I'm uh, out of the city, and so I might have less light pollution than I did last night, but last night was supposed to be like the, the top dog for seeing it. it. Amazed me. I talked to some friends down in Texas. I mean, we we're supposed to see, like, we basically just got grazed up here in the northwest along the whole top of the country, and uh, I had friends down in Texas that could see the northern lights. It's crazy how far it went down. But, uh... Yeah, we're just cruising. Got uh, another 35 miles to home or to where I'm meeting up with the family. And uh, yeah, the uh, camper did awesome again this weekend. Uh, when I get home, I'll show you guys. I reached out to Lone Peak and asked him about the sides that kept kind of coming in on the sides. And I think, uh, I think Keisha misunderstood what I was asking because what they sent back to fix it was what is causing the issue. So I, uh, I got another set of pucks and uh, basically drilled holes in my bedside, put rib nuts in it, and bolted the puck directly to my bedside. Uh, and so there's no flex in the mounts now. And I uh, put spacers in to space out the sides. And that was a week ago. And uh, as of now, it's still got a perfect gap on the back lift gate but uh for as warm as it was today i was kind of second guessing on putting a uh, a roof fan in if you guys remember but i originally ordered the camper with a roof vent and a few other things that aren't on there and they reached out they had this camper somebody changed their order and so i got my camper like two months before i was supposed to and uh, one of the things that it was missing was a roof vent. And they, it's one thing they said they could not add after the fact because it had already been built. And uh, I found the roof vent that they have. I think they charge $450 for it. I found the exact one they have. It goes for $120 on Amazon. But I think I might go with a, a, a better one. I think I might go with a Max Air fan if I end up going with a fan at some point. Um, even with the, uh, the white out, I mean, it... 6 a.m. and it was just I had all the windows mostly open in the camper I had both the vents on the top open and it was already like sweating just sitting in there in my shorts trying to eat some breakfast this morning at 6 30 so I don't know if the roof vent will uh or roof fan will will fix that or if uh that's just something I'm gonna have to live with the uh black pvc or whatever they have for that top the vinyl or whatever it is for the top uh, off the back basically just sucks in the heat so I might uh, I don't know we'll figure something out it's uh, only May so we got uh, yesterday got up to 87 or 88 I think today so it's getting up, up just to 80 um, but we'll, uh, we'll see how the summer pans out I don't think it'll be too hard to uh, add the vent, I mean, it won't be a perfect cut like they do. They do theirs on a CNC machine. 
I got a giant router table basically that cuts all the holes and all the panels for everything. But uh, I've read up on, uh, I've installed a Max Air fan in a trailer before, and I read up on uh, a couple of like the Go Fast Camper pages and stuff, the forums, people adding the add to that. A little different because they got a honeycomb roof and this is a composite panel, but I think it'll be fairly easy as long as I mark everything out. I might, uh, I might actually 3D print a, uh, a router template and uh, I've got a nice Milwaukee router and put a flush cut bit on it and uh, basically double side tape uh, a template or a template like uh, basically something to set the router into and make a perfect hole. That might be my best bet. But we'll kind of play it by ear. Worst case, I'll just put a trim panel on the inside so you can't see my cuts that look like Ray Charles did it. Not the, I don't have steady hands, so it uh, definitely shows when I'm cutting holes and things if it's not a like a circle or using a, a hole saw. But we'll get it figured out. And then uh, kind of see what happens. I've looked into doing like the zero breeze AC units and stuff that the battery powered and 12 volt ones. And every time I'm like right on the fence, I'm like, yeah, maybe I should pick one up. Then I start reading reviews and everybody's like, they're garbage. They don't cool down anything. They basically just take up space. And then other people are like, yeah, it works great. And I mean, obviously everybody's a little different and how they set it up. And if they're cooling down a small tent, if they're cooling down a camper, if they're cooling down something with insulation or not, if they're at 120 degrees versus 80 or 90 degrees. I mean, obviously everything is a little different, but we'll uh, we'll figure something out, make it comfortable in there. I love camping, but I also like being comfortable. You know, it's no point if it's possible not to be miserable to not be miserable. I mean, people talk crap about diesel heaters and stuff all the time, you know, and just get a zero degree sleeping bag. Like, yeah, I can do that. It'll I'll live to the morning, but I'm going to be freezing cold and I'm going to have condensation everywhere, you know? Why wouldn't I have a diesel heater and be comfortable when I go to bed and comfortable in the morning when I wake up and not be freezing and not have to do all that garbage? So being comfortable and being out in the wilderness, I mean, can go hand in hand very easily. So just uh, people stuck in their own ways. You know, I grew up hunting up in the mountains and stuff, you know, living, living for a week in a canvas tent so I mean it's I mean it's a hot tent but I mean at the same time you know it's nothing like it is nowadays you know but we'll get it figured out I'll do a video probably next week uh we're going up for uh the holiday weekend at the end of May to uh, our property on Whidbey Island and uh when I tow with the truck I have not towed with the camper on the back but uh I've towed it with my canopy and my old tent setup which was just as heavy as a camper but I pull my swing outs off the back because it adds a couple hundred pounds to the back of the truck. So I pull my swing outs out. I can't use them anyway, so the trailer hooked up. So I pull those off and uh, maybe I'll do a video on how I do that. A few people ask me, it's about time I replace the bearings in the swing out uh, arms anyway. So maybe I'll order some replacement bearings and get all that done when I have the swing outs off. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. But yeah, if I don't uh, catch up with you guys, actually when I get home, I'll do a I'll finish up this video and I'll show you guys the gaps on the back tailgate now and how they're pretty much even both sides and they've stayed that way uh, even with a couple off-road trips now. So, All right, guys, just got home. Kids were out playing with chalk the other day and it started raining. Enough to smear the chalk everywhere, but not enough to clean it up. So, yeah, this is after the trip here. I don't know if you guys can see it, but... Uh, Gap there, it's almost even all the way up. Gap over here is slightly larger, but not by much, maybe a sixteenth of an inch. You guys, what I did. So this is the uh, puck that Lone Peak installed. Uh, it's just got the clamp on it. This one, I, uh, I cut the hole in the wrong spot here, so I'm not too worried about that. But basically, these are the plungers they use if you've got the puck offset far so far that you don't need uh any shims basically pu pushes on your bed rail i put the puck on marked the holes pulled them out drilled holes and uh, put rib nuts in the metal of my bed rail and then uh, put the bolts through and put the panel back on so this is uh rigidly holding the camper where it's supposed to be on both sides 
Uh, one other thing I noticed on this trip is uh, the fridge. Right now it's fine because it's not too hot, but yesterday the fridge couldn't keep cool. And that's because I've got uh, like a quarter of an inch. It's going to take forever to adjust, but like a quarter of an inch between the fridge and the tailgate. So I need to figure something out here. I'm not sure what I'm going to do because... I can't really move anything forward because of the way I've got all of my cabinets built. So I'll have to figure something out. I don't know. Definitely put a bracket here to hold the fridge in like I used to. I took it off when I when I pulled everything out for the mouse. Put the fridge forward. I mean, that leaves an inch here, but it's still not a whole lot. So I don't know. I'll figure something out if I install some kind of fan or some kind of ducting to get air in there we'll figure something out but yeah this trip uh, was a success yeah i'm gonna go inside and take a shower being dirty is one of my least favorite things and then uh, i'll get my camera and stuff uploaded and get some pictures uh situated from uh, last night and i'll add them into this video a few a few photos if you don't follow me on instagram uh, follow me there that's where i'm gonna post most of them or on the facebook groups but yeah, everything, uh, everything did good. The solar panels did great all weekend. Uh, I just noticed that everything is sold out on my Etsy store, so I'm going to start printing a bunch of stuff today. I uh, finished another set of 10 handle flaps. Those will be up on Etsy this afternoon. Those are sold out. Just sold my last rain gutters 20 minutes ago. I think I only have one diesel heater port left on there. So I'll uh, get the printers ripping, and I'll uh, see you guys in the next one.